Hello everybody, Stone Mason Prowl here, and welcome to another episode of the Bedrock Guide. We are all done with the Stone Mason building, and now it's time to get on to a little bit more of a fun and popular topic. And in today's episode, we'll be going over everything you need to know about flying with the Elytra, including using an Elytra launcher to get yourself off the ground to make flying easier, especially for you mobile users. So first off, when it comes to flying with an Elytra, the first thing you need to do is actually get one. So that means you need to find one of these guys, a stronghold, which I have an episode on that. And you also need to defeat the Ender Dragon and you need to raid an end city. So check out my episodes on that. I believe it's episode 17 or yeah, but I think it's 17 and 18 are the two episodes. If you go back, I'll try to remember to link them down below or throw a graphic up on screen about it. Um, but you need to go get your leecher first and we covered that pretty well in a previous episode. Now, once you have your Elytra, really the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, if you can, is enchant it with Unbreaking 3 and Mending. So like myself here, I have a villager trading hall area set up. So I can go to this guy right here and he's got Unbreaking 3. I could trade for one of those. And he's got Mending right here. I can trade for one of those. And I can add these two books to my Elytra. The Unbreaking 3 makes it break a lot slower. The Mending makes it so I can heal it up with experience points. Unbreaking 3, you can typically get pretty easily through an enchanting table by enchanting these books right here. Any regular book, put it in there, and you have a chance of getting that. Um, and then Mending, you're typically going to have to either trade for that, fish it up, or maybe find a book with it somewhere. Um, I have a whole episode on villager trading though, so if you're looking for a good villager trading hall setup, this is probably it for you. Make sure you go back and check out that episode. So, the Elytra. What is it? How does it work? How do you pronounce it? Um, sometimes I switch back and forth on how I pronounce it, um, but I usually pronounce it Elytra, um, mostly because when I first started watching and first heard of it, I was I was watching Mumbo at the time, and that's how he pronounced it. So you can call me wrong if you want to. That's where I got it from. You know who to blame. Um, but what is it exactly? So it's a cape that you wear, and you wear it in your... Can I have this, please? Um, you wear it in your... A chest slot you see right here so you won't have a chest piece anymore you'll have on the elytra and it helps you it makes you fly which you guys saw earlier right so um you find it in the end it is in the end city boats i um, mean when you equip it and you hit the jump button a second time while you're in the air so like say you jump off of a ledge or even just off the ground we'll go over like actually taking flight in a little bit but if you hit the jump button while you're falling it will activate and you will glide with it, which is totally awesome. So what is it good for? Things like not falling down and taking a whole lot of fall damage. It gives you the ability to jump down from high places and travel both farther and faster. Instead of walking across the ground, you can just glide. You can also use fireworks to propel yourself like this. Just clicking on a firework while it's in your hand will propel you and move you forward quick, getting you from point A to point B very fast. And we mentioned earlier activating the Elytra. So you activate it by hitting the jump button while you are falling. So if I just simply walk off the edge here and then while I am falling down, hit the jump button, it will activate the Elytra just like this. Now it is activated. I hit the jump button and I'm gliding. Now when you're flying, gliding, whatever, you do not want to make an approach onto the ground at a steep angle because you will take fall damage. But even if you're going fast, if you take a more shallow angle like this, you see, no damage is taken at all. You do not want to just smash down into the ground. Also, smashing to the side of objects at full speed is usually going to hurt too, unless you hit a vine there like I just did. How did I just fail at smashing my face into something? And there we go. That's more like it. If you're not hearing any game sounds, that's because I'm a derp. Windows reset my audio settings. You'll hear them later in the video. And once you get really good at using it, you can actually use your rockets to take off from anywhere. So I can be standing right here on the ground and I can hit jump twice really quick and then take off and fly. Because when you hit, I don't know if, will you see it if I do it like this? Ow. But you should see that if I hit the jump button twice, you see my Elytra will, it'll activate, right? So on console and on PC, it's pretty easy. I'm not a mobile player, nor have I ever been. So... I've heard on mobile, it's a little difficult, but on mobile, maybe even getting like one block up like this could give you enough lift to be able to just easily take off from the ground. Keep in mind, there's a couple of parity differences between us and Java though. So if you've ever watched a Java edition player like on Hermitcraft or, or um, Legacy play, you'll see them take off from water all the time. 
that's actually not possible in bedrock edition you cannot fly in and out of water like they do on java you have to be on the ground or oddly enough you can fly out of lava too also if you need a little bit of help don't feel don't be afraid to take like some extra blocks that you have and pillar up a few blocks tall and then jump off the edge activate your elytra and then fly it gives you a little bit extra time to be able to use that firework rocket you'll end up leaving some ugly dirt pillars everywhere but it'll get you off the ground nonetheless so we've spent a lot of time talking about rockets which if you really want to take full advantage of the elytra you're going to need right so how do you make rockets well first of all you're going to want some kind of way to farm sugarcane first we'll look at a manual farm which is simply like this you have a uh, you have sugarcane right beside water. In my case, these are waterlogged, so this is technically considered water. And you can farm, knock down the sugarcane, and then take it over to a crafting table, which I don't think I have over here. And when you take it to that crafting table, you can see that you have paper here, and paper is going to be the first ingredient you need to making rockets. The second ingredient you're going to need is from one of these guys right here. He doesn't have to be named Creepy Deep, although this one's name is Creepy Deep. But these guys right here, you've probably seen, if you've killed them before, they drop gunpowder. And if you are a seldom rocket user, you're just getting started with rockets, really, you could probably make off with just killing these guys at night. And that'll get you started on rockets, especially if you have a looting three sword. Keep in mind, again, looting three will actually make your mobs drop more stuff. So if you want more gunpowder, use a looting three sword when you kill one of these guys and they'll drop it. And the best way to kill creepers, wait till nighttime till these guys start spawning and just take them out. I usually find if you have at least a diamond sword, the easiest method to killing creepers is just simply rush them. If you kind of sprint towards them and hit, 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 usually you can get three hits in before they blow up. Um, if you're not that skilled though, you can always take the method of hit and then back up and then hit and back up and you should be able to do it then too. But you can get the gunpowder from the creepers here. Just run around at nighttime for a night and you'll probably come away with at least like 20 or so gunpowder. And then we'll go over how to actually craft the rockets here in just a moment. But wait, there's more. You can also get gunpowder from killing ghasts, which I, I think in my nether hub here, which doubles as a gas farm. Oh, I, I could have swore I saw a ghast in here. But ghasts you can find in the nether. You gotta watch out because they are especially dangerous they do blow up blocks so you need to be around like a solid area before you start fighting them and oh there is he's in there yeah, let's go take him out let's go take him out we need to we need to get rid of all the ghasts so these guys really it's easiest just use the bow you won't get the looting effect if you kill them with the bow but you'll still usually get gunpowder and you get these ni nice little gas tiers as well which we're not going to go over their use but uh, they are commonly wanted item as well to uh, make other things now, believe it or not, I just recent, recently, recently, I just recently started doing this full time. Yes, this is my first episode being a full time content creator. Uh, I won't explain anything around that and the why and all the cool details here. I have an update video most of you probably already seen, but I wanted to thank you for being here. And if you'd like to show your support, make sure you click that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ring that bell to make sure you get all the notifications and follow me in all the other great places like Discord and on Twitch and on Twitter and all of that. Thanks for being here. Let's continue with the video. You also can make a sugarcane farm. I have a sugarcane farming area here. We're underground. I have both a micro sugarcane farm. It uses a whole bunch of bone meal to make the sugarcane. And I still, I need to refill this thing with bone meal apparently. And I have a passive bone meal or a sugarcane farm as well that has a minecart going around and collecting sugarcane that comes from these guys. I have an episode on this earlier too, obviously, both of these guys. So if you need to know how to farm sugarcane, I would go back and watch that episode. And we also have a big mob farm here that creates tons of creepers. Look at this. Look, there's creepers in here right now. All I gotta do is turn this on. And that guy right there is gonna get chopped to bits. Look at him. Look at him. Getting all chopped up. And this thing makes tons of gunpowder. You see, I have a shulker loader system here. And if I browse through here, ah, look, I have shulker boxes full of gunpowder. I have num a number of shulker boxes full of gunpowder. So really, I have rockets for as long as I need. And actually, let's talk again about rockets really quick. So when it comes to firework rockets, not everybody knows this I found, but first of all, they, it didn't used to be in the crafting recipe. It is now. So you see, you got firework rockets, flight duration one, 
and for every one paper you use one gunpowder and that gives you a level one firework rocket but and it gives you actually three of them but what everybody doesn't know is there's also a level two firework rocket you add any second gunpowder that gets you flight duration two and a flight duration three firework rocket as well there is not a fire uh, flight direction flight duration four one though just one two and three and basically what it does is the higher the level the longer the rocket gives you boost now i've played around with both and i can tell you i actually prefer just the regular flight duration one rockets because i find oftentimes at least for me a lot of times i want to fly shorter distances like i want to get up there right instead of having to pillar up there i can just do this and just bloop plop right up here also another parity difference between bedrock edition and java edition that most of you probably don't know about i don't you might not either know that you can do this in bedrock edition or you might not know the java edition cannot do this but on bedrock edition we can stop our flight so i could be flying in the air and i can just hit my space button and i'll just drop and then i can hit the space button again and reactivate the elytra java edition actually can't do that once they're in flight they don't have a way to stop it unless they land so there's no way to just, I don't know, like the time, like when I usually use this or do this is like, again, say I want to get up there instead of just flying the entire duration up like this and having to like do this weird like circle around thing. And then half the time you like miss the ledge. Instead, what I do is I will just jump and then once I get up high enough, I'll deactivate and then plop right down exactly where I want to go. It is super helpful. The, the Java Edition guys, they should really have this and maybe we'll trade them. Like I'll give you guys on Java Edition the ability to stop your rockets in midair. If you also give me the ability to use my Elytra, it, I just I just went from Elytra to Elytra in the same sentence. You give me the, the ability to take off out of water in it. Does that sound like a fair trade? I think it sounds like a fair trade. I want to take a quick second here to show you guys something a little cool because one of my passions that I have is I want to help make the Bedrock Edition of the game better and more accessible to, or let's not say accessible, like have more cool features like Java Edition has. So I do look for and like to showcase some of these like cool add-ons. And I got a couple to show you guys real quick. So I have right here, I've showed this before in video, but I have a durability viewer. You guys see in your hand in my uh, window down there, I have numbers down by my uh, tools. That is the, the durability of those tools. And if I go to my menu here, I can hover over these don't see anything when you hover over it but if I click it see up here in the top right hand corner it tells me the durability of the items this way you always know what the durability of your items are when they're about to break that way you know how long you can go until you have to do a repair on your stuff or unequip it if it is um, about to break number two look up in the top left hand corner of my screen my coordinates are gone where are they oh um, the durability viewer by the way that can be downloaded it was made by Lucas and Lucas has it available for download on MCPEDL. I'll try to remember to link that down below, but just go to MCPEDL.com and you can type in Durability Viewer. It'll show up. Um, but also, take a look. If I hit the F8 button here, ooh, what is that? That is a miniature debug screen, just like Java Edition. Um, yes, it does have the ability to tell you lots of different useful information, which is great. So like I can see the light level of the area that I'm standing in. So like all of this, I think should be, oh, nope. Light level 10, 11, 12, 11, 10, and all of this in here is 10. If you see it there on the left hand side, um, it shows the coordinates. It shows what direction you're facing. It shows, you see where it says E, E, uh, E 109. That's how many entities or like mobs and that sort of thing are in the area it includes like all my villagers from the villager trading hall and all of that sort of stuff. So it gives a lot of really useful information. This is not yet available to the public. It'll be available soon ish. Um, he made it for a single player and then he made it for a server and I know he's working out a lot of the like I don't know if I would call it kinks but just kind of perfecting it and fine-tuning it to work the way he wants it to work and at some point I imagine he will release it both for single player and for servers and when he does I'll be sure to put that in the description box down below too now the fun's not over because once you learn how to fly with the Elytra one of the fun things you can do is set up an Elytra launcher um, there are some pretty like small simple ones that can just kind of help you get off the ground and there's some that are Let's just say 
a little bit more explosively fun. So now let's have a little bit of fun. Let's make an Elytra launcher. We're gonna start with one that is super simple, very easy for anybody to build in their world. Um, and it's not gonna take up a lot of space. Can I get these out of here? Thanks. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to drop down a pressure plate, stone pressure plate right here. I'm actually gonna use this Elytra launcher here at the base. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna actually skip a space and I'm gonna dig down a couple of spaces. I think two will do the trick. And we're gonna put that there. We're gonna put a slime block right here. You are going to need a slime block for this. And just to get ourselves a little bit of room here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to knock that out. And we're just gonna simply grab a piece of redstone dust and a repeater. We're gonna put the dust right here. Whenever you step on this, that dust is gonna light up because this pressure plate, whenever something steps on it, it powers this block. That block will power the block below it, which is the redstone dust right here that I just conveniently knocked up out of the ground. It's fine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a repeater. <clears throat> we're gonna sit it right here. We're now giving that power. And we're gonna set that to four ticks. We want a little bit of a delay that way everything we everything times out good and that is it now whenever you step on this it is going to lift up these other blocks around it it's fine is there not really that big of a deal if you don't want it to lift up the blocks you can either you can use any immovable block such as um, obsidian or not, not slime blocks um, obsidian or crying obsidian would work there also you can use glazed terracottas here it will not move the glazed terracotta either so now let's say I'm coming out the house and I would like to fly. All I've got to do is not put those in my offhand like I've already done once. I could just come out here. I'm running out. Okay. Big, no big deal. And I get launched up in the air just like that. And I just got to activate my Elytra as I go. So run. And I hit the jump button again while I'm in the air. And I could very easily take off. Super great, super easy thing for you mobile players to do. As you saw, it took me just a few seconds to do it. And it makes getting flight a lot easier. Again, bam, just like that, super easy. Now this next method, I actually already had built. I built this during a stream. And this is only going to work if you have diamond gear on. Well, it's only gonna work good if you have diamond gear. I'll show you what happens if you have regular like netherite gear. And the reason a netherite gear won't work good is because it has knockback resistance. Uh, but we have a lot of dispensers here. Uh, what do we have? Eight of them to be exact. And those dispensers have TNT in it. So so this method is a, is a little expensive, but it's by far the most fun. And all I have is obsidian all through here. If you explode something in water, uh, like TNT or a creeper, for example, it does not blow up any blocks. So what I could do is I could stand right here on this fence post, which gets me just a little bit above ground. I could press this button right here. It's gonna dispense TNT. And kaboom! <laughs> it doesn't hurt me at all. And now I'm way high up in the air. This is so awesome. Let me show you. Oh man, I can do that. I need to do that a few more times off camera just because that's so fun. Let me show you what it does with netherite gear on. With netherite gear on, as you will see here, not quite as fun. You don't go quite as far, but it still gets you off the ground. A little expensive to just get, you know, 12, 15 blocks out of, uh, out of the ground, but it still does the trick. Now, there are other types of um, Elytra launchers as well. I, I saw a really cool new one um, on a YouTube tutorial video that is made of snow layers. We're not gonna make that now, but I might do that in a future episode. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll borrow that design, credit the original creator of it, and we'll, like, we'll do one of those. Before we leave though, you guys see that thing right there? I, I feel like we gotta try a little something. I have no clues if this is going to work and I don't know if it's going to kill me either because we're naked right now But I want to see if we can blow ourselves up and get into this And I think if I I don't know if it matters where I position myself or not But let's see this is this is not gonna be good It's not gonna be oh gosh, we got to land in the water land in the water land in the water land in the water 
Oh, and that did not work. I, I just lost like 240 something levels. It's absolutely fine. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. If you want to see me do derpy stuff like that, you should probably join me on stream because it does happen. But thanks so much for watching for this episode. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much for your love and support and all of the nice words you guys have been giving me. I appreciate it. And now that we're doing this thing full time, be ready to I should probably pick my stuff up, shouldn't I? Be ready to start seeing a lot of bedrock guide videos. I'm talking about like we may start seeing like three of these things a week, and we're gonna be able to make all sorts of crazy project progress, process, progress, words. We're gonna do stuff and it's gonna be fun, is basically what I'm trying to say. So thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. And it's nighttime. I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>